Hello, I'm Billy Hoffman from Rigor. Today on Web Perfectionist, we're going to take a look at HTTP compression. Now, HTTP compression is a really cool optimization, and essentially what we're doing is we're leveraging the fact that the CPU in your server and also even in your cell phone is way faster than the network. So if I'm going to send you a 100K HTML document, instead of just transmitting on that wire, what I'm going to do is actually take that 100K, compress it down to say 20K, send you that across the wire, and then have you unzip it on the other side. Even though that sounds like more work, to compress something, transmit it, and then uncompress it, it's actually faster than transmitting the whole 100K because the network is fairly slow. So let's see what that looks like. Here's merrymaids.com, and uh, we see that there's a content encoding header, gzip, which means, hey, here's a response that's compressed, and we see that it's only 7.5K. But if we look up here, we see the body is actually 22K. So we've been able to compress this thing down by 70%, uh, and avoid having to send extra data across the network. Let's contrast that with universitytees.com. Here, we told them with this accept encoding header, I support HTTP compression, give it to me, but they did not give me compression. That's the performance problem. They sent you 18K, they only had to send you 5K if they had used compression. That's a savings of 72%. That's awesome. So uh, the way you do this is you configure it in your web server to actually compress the content or at the CDN level to compress the content. Let's actually look a little bit more at university tees um, to get an idea of the type of content we should be compressing. We see that actually the base HTML page, the CSS, the JavaScript, all of those things aren't being compressed. Uh, and again, savings of over 70%. But but we also see that SVG images are being served and they're not being compressed. SVG images, even though they're images, they're just text. And so they're not natively compressed and you should compress it. But what else should we compress beyond just text files? Actually, this is apple.com and apple.com is serving you a ton of font files that they are not being compressed. And if they were, the savings would be over 50%. A lot of people forget about font files because they're binary. But even though they're binary, these file formats are not natively compressed. Even some versions of WAF font files are not as compressed as they should be. And so you not only want to compress text, you also want to compress really anything that is not natively compressed. Now, of course, it's possible to go too far. You set up your server to compress everything. That's what Ashford Homes here did. Uh, and they're actually delivering me a JPEG that's also being served with compression. And this is just silly. The JPEG is already compressed natively inside. Squeezing a rock isn't going to make the rock any smaller. And all you're really doing is just adding overhead and latency, trying to squeeze something down that can't be squeezed any farther. So this is actually a bad thing to do, to be too aggressive in trying to optimize and compress everything. Now, the final thing is once you get this kind of configuration set up, you know, just compress text stuff, just compress things that are not natively compressed, don't compress images, you can still have problems trying to give it to all of your different servers. So this is CNN, and we see that CDN or CNN is actually having three JavaScript files loaded from this CDN that are not using compression. Now this is weird. CDN's pretty, or CNN is pretty smart. Uh, you, we don't see the C, the base HTML or other CSS files here. So clearly they're compressing some of their content. Why are these three slipping through? Well, let's actually look at all of the resources that uh, CNN is going to load on this page. So let me go uh, all the file types. And then once we actually filter by JavaScript, we can see that they're loading, here's that i.cdn that's serving it without compression, but we see there's JavaScript coming from z.cdn.turner.com. Let's take a look at that. And sure enough, that is being served with compression. So the problem here is CD CNN knows what they should be compressing, but they haven't distributed the configuration file evenly across all of their hosts. This can be a real challenge when you've got lots of different places and host names and content management systems that things are coming from to make sure that you've applied a consistent configuration everywhere. This is where a tool like Rigor Optimization can really help out because we can test everything holistically. So that's HTTP compression. It's a great optimization. You want to make sure you're compressing all your text resources and really everything that is not natively compressed, like font files and things like that. Thanks for listening.